Let's now cover user input or the ability to uh, send data from a web page back to your server to be processed. So we're going to be building a form and we're going to examine get and post both get and post data types uh, well not data types, ways of submitting data through an HTTP request and we'll look at the, the differences between them when we should and shouldn't use them and uh, we'll create a form to submit a name to another page to be processed using either get or post. Uh, so this is going to be a very basic example but it will set you up to be able to post whatever data that you want to to your server. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and actually build a form. So let's go ahead and construct a form. Now what I'm doing here is I'm giving this form an action and a method and we'll cover them in just a moment. So what we're now going to do is create an input field with a type of text and we're going to give this a name. Now this name is extremely important because this allows us to pick up the name uh, that you give here in PHP. So I'm going to call this um, let's call this just name so that's how we're going to pick this up um, I'm also going to have an input uh, with a type of submit and this is going to allow us to actually submit this data okay so let's preview this form in our browser you can see that we just have a, an input field here and a submit button at the moment when we click this what it's actually doing is because we've not defined a method or a or an action it's submitting to the current page with the method get and we can see this in the URL here you can see there's this name key here with no data if I was to type in a full name here and click submit you can see that we've got the value Alex Garrett with a plus for a space so this is um, this has been set as a get uh, request so basically this has been sent in the URL of the HTTP request rather than the body now the body would be the method of post now, it's still available to the server but it's just been sent um, in the body of the request rather than the URL so if I again type Alex Garrett and click submit that data is now available to us in PHP it's still been sent with the HTTP request if we check our network tab and we go ahead and enter Alex Garrett and click submit you can see that we get this here if we go ahead and click on this and go under headers uh, you can see that we have form data just here and name Alex Garrett so we can see that this data still been submitted um, let's just change this back to get actually and take a look at the network tab again so I've confirmed uh, uh, let's hit yep yeah. so we've resubmitted if we click on this you can see now that you've got query string parameters rather than the actual data so we've got a query string parameter here name is the key Alex Garrett is the value so when should we use get and when should we use post well generally get should not be used to for example insert a record into a database or do anything like that it should purely be as a almost like a getter so I might want to say well I want to be on page 2 so I might want to have a page that looks something like this page equals 2 and that might select page 2 of the results uh, from a particular database set or, or something like that so generally we would do that but let's take a look at actually how we actually pick this up in PHP and we we'll use printr on uh, get and post super globals just so we can see how this data has been transferred so let's create a new file rather than submitting this to this one we could of course do everything up here in actual fact that might make a little bit more sense so we're submitting to action uh, we're submitting the action as nothing we could of course just put index.php in here this could be a, a completely another file it really really doesn't matter where we're submitting to this data is still going to be available to us because it's been sent with the HTTP request well in this case I'm just going to choose index.php and inside of here I'm going to say print r dollar underscore get and that's it and this looks a little odd it's just the super global notation in PHP uh, you'll see others like request in actual fact we could have print r and request as well so if we were to say Alex Garrett and click submit you can see that we've now got name Alex Garrett now we don't really tend to use request uh, instead we want to specifically define which um, which method we, we want to um, pick the data up from so when I click on that we get exactly the same result back but then again we won't get post data back here um, so if we change this to post get will be empty but instead we can use post and this will be exactly the same thing and we'll see now that this actually 
uh, comes through as the name is the key and Alex Garrett as the value, but we haven't got this in the URL as we've already seen in the network tab. So what do we actually do with this data? What, how can we actually do, uh, do something with this data? Well, the first thing that we really need to do is check if this data is actually available to us or not. And we can use the isSet construct in PHP. So we're going to create a little if statement and we're going to say if isSet dollar underscore post name, then we can go ahead and actually do something with it. So um, if I was to go ahead and echo OK here, um, when we initially land on this page, remember we saw the sort of empty array notation up there a moment ago. Now we see nothing because this hasn't been set. It's not being sent to our page, so we don't have access to it. When I go ahead and click submit now, it says OK because that data has actually been set and sent. And we can, of course, do this with multiple values. So we could choose name and age. Um, let's just put some placeholders in here. Okay, so we can actually do this with multiple items. So um, if we look at this, we've got name and age here. Um, I want to go ahead and check if name and age is set. So I can comma separate what I pass through to is set. And I can say if name and age is available, name and age are available. And what I can then do is refresh and go ahead and type in a name and just type in any any age into here and click submit it says name and age are available so in this case what I can actually do is I could say something like name equals dollar underscore post name because I know that that exists now and I can just duplicate this down and do exactly the same thing for the age and then I can down here echo out you are X and you are Y years old and then I can go ahead and just replace these in with complex syntax name and age and that's it so now what we see is Alex Garrett 24 click submit and it tells us uh, our name and our age now just as a side note here uh, and as a little warning what we're actually doing here is we are um, are not really um, sanitizing any of this data that we get through now in this case it's only example it doesn't really matter too much but generally speaking uh, this data could be harmful and I'll just demonstrate this very quickly if I go ahead and type some uh, open and close script tags here and I alert perhaps just the number one and I type in my age when I hit submit here uh, you will see if we inspect this that we have this script here with um, potential data inside of it so Let's just do this here. And you can see that we've got a well, basically in, in terms of uh, XSS attacks. In this case, we see that we have a XSS order to refuse to execute script because it its source was found within the request. The order to send. So we've got a sort of XSS protection uh, built in here. But generally, we want to go ahead and, and uh, uh, protect against this now so you need to be really careful when you're outputting data and we out and we we um, rectify this with the HTML entities function and generally what we'll do is we'll provide um, the uh, or wrap the um, string that we're outputting in HTML entities um, we will then specify um, uh, something like end quotes and then we'll also explicitly define the character encoding so UTF-8 now in this case what's going to happen is if we do this for name and age in fact we'll just do it for name just for demonstration purposes and we can get back on track you'll see that we have um, if we just type in the same as we did before you can see that this is like literally output and that's because uh, we're outputting the entity equivalent so here you can see that this is converted to entities so anyway um, that's that's basically now we have the ability to um, post data through we could of course cast this to an in if we were concerned about security as well um, because we know that this needs to be a number so what we've done here is we've looked at posting data um, using or defining an action in our HTML form and sending this back to our page, checking and then outputting uh, data um, onto 
onto our page. So this is how we submit form data in PHP. Now, why would we not want to use get in some of the circumstances and want to use post in other circumstances? Well, one thing is that post will handle a lot more data than a get request will, simply because it's, it's sent in the request body. So for example, if you are asking a, an admin to add an article to a page or an author to add an article to a page, you obviously wouldn't send their whole article in a GET request. You would send it in a POST request because it allows for more data to be sent via, um, the, via the form and uh, via the HTTP request. So that's how we use GET and POST in PHP and uh, a couple of little security considerations as well.